I find myself unable at the moment to look beyond 2026. Wow. Interesting. We'll then emerge into a different state of consciousness. Our capacity for advanced and accelerated intuition, empathy, compassion, and the ability to be able to sense what's really going on is going to become three or four times as, as strong as it is now. A lot of people aren't going to be able to make the required changes. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Thank you, Steve, for making the time to do this. Today, for everybody who doesn't know Steve, he is uh, not only my personal astrologer for years and my teacher, He's uh, he's been an astrologer for more than 40 years. He wrote some great books. We're going to talk about it as well. And um, he has an MA in cultural astronomy and astrology, right? So very experienced practitioner in astrology. So thank you, Steve, for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, not only that, I gain much of knowledge from Steve. I gain a bunch of friends. So uh, we as S Steve students, we meet every week and talk about astrology. And I made some grand friendships and I'm so happy about it. So it's been a great journey. Thank you very much. So what are you doing? Are you still having new students? God, yeah. Yeah, good. Last night I finished the aspects of the aspect section of the beginner's module. And now I'm next week on starts in the intermediate. And there was about, there was only about 50 this time on the beginner's module. So I'm not going to run it again this year. I'll leave it for a, a year or two. Okay. Um, and on the intermediate... I would normally expect half the people to drop off. So I would only have expected 20 or 25, but I've got about 30, 35 people doing the immediate intermediate. And um, what's really interesting is that a few weeks ago, I mentioned that from the last group, there's about 12 to 40 people yeah. who saw it all the way through to the very end. And then they formed this group of astrological students where they meet every week. Yeah. And they've got a really, they've christened themselves with a name that I personally can't stand. <laughs> we are judders. We are judders. <laughs> and so immediately a lot of my students now went and say, oh, can I join that group? Mm -hmm. You have to wait until you finish the vast course. And then I'll put you in touch with the others. Yes, no point in then joining now because I've only know half of what you're talking about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Not to go around the, the mapping or the sinistry or trans. We are learning so much from each other and helping each other going through current transits and what is happening in each other's lives. Beautifully. Beautiful. I am so impressed. I am so, I am really surprised because when I cut you loose, when I, when I, when, you know, I, I stopped with you for two or three sessions. Just listening. Mm -hmm. then I, thought, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> uh, I've got other things I've got to do. I've got to make some money. So I cut you loose. So I thought, okay, probably three or four of them will stick it out and get it together. But to hear that all of you have just kept your meetings together. And, you know, and this is people from many different countries, a yeah. number of different continents. Absolutely. In some ways. Yes. I'm so proud of you all. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We are, we had a really great teacher. The way you teach, no, it's really, you know, down to the point, simple uh, for everybody to understand, you know, not, not many mumbo jumbo astrological talk, you know, you have all this astrological jargon that people get lost. This is, you know, very practical. On another note, why I have you here today, I would really love to hear your insights of what is currently happening astrologically in the sky. How, where do you see the world coming? What is going on in the world? And where do you see astrology? Where is what is the future of astrology? So there's two questions. Yes. Yeah. The first question is is what's going on in the world? Yeah. You're looking immediate short term, medium term. I'm thinking what what in your opinion is important to make a note of of currently in in, a, in the next couple of years, or what are we uh, can, what, what can we expect from from what is happening? What can we expect from the world? Because there's so many things going on today, but what, in your opinion, is the most important thing that we maybe should just pay attention to? Just for the benefit of your listeners, okay. Um, this book mm -hmm. is called An mm -hmm. Okay. Here. Right. I'm going to one. Yeah. That's not the one I use. Okay. That's mm -hmm. just because it looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. One on each. I'm still, I'm still not there, but I'm coming there. <laughs> You've got, off, just for the benefit of your viewers, mm -hmm. is a timetable. Mm -hmm. It's like a bus timetable with the dates of each month down one side and the planets along the top. Mm -hmm. So you can work out the planet positions. You can know the planetary positions for every day of every month of every year. This is a 50-year one. The one you just showed is a 100-year yeah. one. So it's, that's like a bus timetable or train time thing. When you work out the planet, you can see where the planets are. You realize that they're always moving in different orbits at different speeds in different ways. And because they are never going to be in exactly the same position with each other again, every moment they're creating a new pattern with each other that is unique and individual. This is why no two horoscopes can ever be the same, even identical twins. There's always going to be a little bit of difference. I used to, used to, some people take books to bed, other people take dictionaries to bed or puzzle games. I used to take the ephemeras to bed because I could see patterns with all the numbers. And for years, I've looked at the patterns both around where we are at that moment in time and they're projected forward. So for years, I've been looking forward, I was looking forward to 1999. Then I was looking forward to the Grand Cross of 2012. Then years ago, I was looking forward to the... Um, Jupiter Saturn Pluto conjunction in Capricorn a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's quite scary when I look back now and see what I wrote in 2014 about that time. I remember, yeah. I, I was one of your first followers from 2011. When you started your YouTube, I was the one of the first who followed everything you were saying. And I got excited about 2020. Now I'm excited about 2026 as well. <laughs> well, we'll come to that. Yeah. What I want there is just. I want to read a paragraph from my last book, which has just been reprinted. We'll come to the books in a bit. Yeah. The very last paragraph of the last book I wrote, I'm talking about the escalation and the acceleration of consciousness and the delusion from an astrological perspective, particularly regarding Pluto. I wrote, when this hypothetical exponential graph curve of evolution reaches prime vertical, only one of two things can happen. The pace of acceleration can become unsustainable. The pathway of the curve turns in on itself, resulting in a sudden crash and the whole process beginning again. This time in the opposite direction to the past. In this eventuality, a dystopian future of a soulless population living on processed food, chemical drugs, antibiotics and endless superfic superficial media in an increasingly polluted environment will only lead to a mass pandemic. I wrote this in 2014, about 2022. I also, the next sentence said, alternatively, the exponential curve can do the opposite and exceed the parameters of the graph, leading to a greater symbiosis with the Earth, an advancement into the emerging soft technology in a way that embodies spirituality as opposed to the mechanist attitudes of the old hard technology. All right, then, well, I'm 14. So, and, and that's kind of scary when I look back on it. Um, and now we're past that. And I have to ask myself, did we learn the lessons of the last few years? In certain ways, yes, but privately, no. No, yeah. So now I'm looking forward to the big one. Mm -hmm. When he put it into Aquarius... Sat some hand action together into Aries and Uranus into Gemini. All the big four planets, all the slowest moving planets, all moving from the feminine into the masculine side, yeah. all within a year or two of each other, leading to a point in the future where there's going to be... It's the biggest period of concentrated and compressed change that there's ever been from an astrological perspective. This sign lives would have happened before many thousands of years ago, but then we weren't aware of the existence of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So the archetypes that they represent, particularly around self-awareness, one's own psychology, and things like that, weren't we weren't knowledgeable. We're still living in the fields, and you know, going to church on Sundays, doing things like that. Yeah. But um, it's never been a time like this, and and. I find myself unable at the moment to look beyond 2026. Wow. Interesting. 
And you always look ahead. Mm, interest are caught up in what's coming up in the nearish future these days. Do you feel that the changes are going to be much faster and more condensed than before? Very much so. And a lot of people aren't going to be able to make the required change. You... One of my catchphrases I use with students is that if you study astrology long enough and you become aware of its strengths, mm -hmm. then it's, to me it's the people who know really study astrology as opposed to the rest of the people, or most of the rest of the people, it's the difference between human beings and humans being. Yeah, I like that one. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a play on words, but um, the the approaching cataracts of time, the the nodal points, the acceleration into the rabbit hole, into the minute little aperture that's approaching rapidly towards us forcing us to compress ever more sharper, finer, refined, as we get towards that point of transcendence. Most of us who get through that, and I hope I'm one of them, will then emerge into a, a, a different state of consciousness, where we will obviously still retain identity, individuality, sense of self. Nothing will change on the surface, but our capacity for... Um, advanced and accelerated intuition, uh, empathy, compassion, and the ability to be able to sense what's really going on with each other, with all the animals, with the planet, is going to become three or four times as, as strong as it is now. The other option mm -hmm. is that we will all end up being coming sidewalks. Where does AI come into all this? I did a big video on astrology and AI. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> I never went to do it. It was just someone, one of my partners said something to me. I just thought, oh, oh, right. oh, I, I, oh, do a video, cool. And then that video was unplaffed, unprepared, straight from the park. It was good. I don't remember a word of what I said, but I know I stand by it 100%. Yeah. Where does AI come into this? It would be very easy for me to fall into the, oh my God, computers are going to take over everyone and humans are going to be wiped out. Mm. Yeah. Um, at the same time, without the emerging soft technology, what's the point of evolution? Bearing in mind the damage that we have done to this planet just in the last 150 years, it is now irreversible, or the reversing of it is going to take thousands of years. Yeah, so, what, how do we do it? What do we do? Do we just die as a species because the air and the water is becoming more and more toxic? Do we continue to live on ever increasingly processed food, artificial media, hype spin, whilst the remaining elitist power um, um, sensors become ever more uh, fewer and fewer? I say go drone themselves, or or do we take on board the emerging technology and work with it? I can see a situation where I'm not talking about downloading consciousness. I'm not talking about us becoming machines. But I do feel that there's a, a there's a space and a capacity and room for melding and merging with AI in the future, not quite cyborg, not like the Jack Club, not like a software download conscious, mm -hmm. but some type of interface. Integration of, yeah. Whether it be with the glasses that can not only augment our reality, but also read our own feelings. But more likely, I feel, it's some type of way that's going to not only help our brains intuit and telepathically link with other but also some type of enhanced intelligence form that's going to make us all self-aware and realize what's really happening on this and, and that's my hope for AI that it's going to boost the intelligence and make people sit up and go wait a minute I don't want McDonald's anymore I want organic food I, I don't like what's happening yeah. to my air and to my water and to the animals 
And I think the majority of people are going to stand up and start thinking, well, do I just want lots more money at the expense of everything else? Or do I want to care about what's happening to my family, my friends, my family? Yeah. I might sound like an outdated hippie like that, but I'm putting my hopes on this time. I also believe that this Saturn Pisces now, it's maybe going to make us re- reassess our belief system. You know, what do we actually... So we're, we're seeing an acceleration of the ruination of the Earth. And uh, Saturn in Pisces is... I, I do associate Pisces with the environmental situations. And um, I know that there will be a conjunction of Saturn and Neptune in early 26 at zero degree of Aries at the very very start of the Zodiac this has never happened in our consciousness before. the last time Saturn conjunctive Neptune would have been oh goodness you, you've got to multiply 174 by about 10 so at least a thousand years ago, and Neptune was he discovered them. We had no idea yeah. of words like spirituality and the other things that Neptune. Yes. Yeah, so, so what you're saying is, for people, the only way to prepare is to embrace the change because and the unknown. We we won't know what it's coming, right? And hope for the best. I do believe. I'm a great optimist <laughs> that it's going to be for the better. Another way of looking at this. When I was born in the mid 1950s. There were 2 billion, 2.1 billion people on that. And now, wait, you know, crazy. Imagine what you report, it's five years long. At the same time, technology's gone from when I was a kid to these little wooden boxes with black and white moving screens, one per apartment block, to now loading everything. So it, technology has kept up with the acceleration of population. But such a spirituality. Yes. Uh, what I seen good from the pandemic, for example, is this rise of astrology. Like they call it the renaissance for astrology, which I love. There's always downsides because there are a bunch of people now, but practicing and doing. But um, I think it's very good because I think that's how we also raise our consciousness and awareness with learning astrology, right? So I think it's a good. Yeah, astrology and the internet were made for each other. Yeah, that's true. Point. I'll add my. First email in 1998. I had my first website in 2000, 2001. And by that time, I'd been studying astrology already for about 20, 25 years. So I was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. When you look at the history of the internet, the two most searched things on the internet are astrology and pornography. I know, right? That's it. <laughs> well, it's it's passion, <clears throat> let's say. <laughs> Before we go on, I just want another recent uh, event that is coming up next year very, very soon. It's the Uranus and Jupiter conjunction in April next year. So that's major. What do you feel? Like? What, what's going to be? I, I'm seeing that in so many of my clients. Mm-hmm. And I think I said to my students the other night, any bone of the fortune that's enough to have the sun, moon, ascendant, or with heaven at 20, 21, 22 degrees of the fixed signs. Uh, Taurus, Leo, and Zorpio, Aquarius. That last 10 days of April next year has the potential to be monumental. And it should be very good as long as we're intelligent enough not to let the hype and spin take over. It is possible that this could be a very explosive combination. Mm-hmm. I don't mean explosive in terms of bombs or warfare. But it's, I mean, explosive in that a number of people may find themselves getting into situations which rapidly escalate and become crises instead of drama and go way over the top. But the intelligent people at that time will go, right, so I'll pick opportunities here. Let's take the top 15% instead of the top 90%. Because then we know we'll be successful. And that's intelligence. Be more selective. I like that. Very Intelligence. Mm. It's intelligent to have a, a Mercedes or a Porsche on the front or on the front drive. Uh, that's just in the Gorge mind. Intelligent is very intelligence is very different to cleverness or smart. I remember what you thought us about Jupiter, especially because he's in this conjunction. As you get older for pers- for people, but as you mature and you're more aware, you go for quality, not quantity. So always think about that, and this is a perfect think to actually go for quantity for quality not quantity next year that's how i feel 
But when, when you look at it from a planetary perspective, mm. when you were in a small digital it was the acceleration into the real world of crypto. And for a few years, we were there, right, it's the end of old money now. It's the end of the bank banking system because with crypto, all transactions are public and there are no bankers. Now, crypto's taken a hammering in this last year. But with Jupiter hitting Uranus in Taurus, which after all deals with value and work, mm -hmm. resources, materials, possessions, assets, money. So I do expect some type of financial and or economic blip at that time. Whether it'll be a crash or whether it'll be a rapid expansion, I don't know. But then all people will not go to extremes. Yeah, that's very important. Be be smart, people. <laughs> Yeah, th think about a long run because that's what Taurus is about. It's a long run, not quick, yeah, right? So, so that's what it is. Awesome. Okay, I think that's, that's enough information for people to understand what's happening recently. Where do you see astrology? Where do you see... Okay, please. Yes. How quick this video gets out. But in the next 10, 12 days, we have this big Mars opposite Saturn. Okay. And there's going to be a few buttons getting pushed worldwide mm. around that mm. over the coming week. I think if I think it's exact around about the twenty first, twenty second. Your next week, next week is crazy. From the new moon, the whole week is crazy next week. So, as you say, buckle up. <laughs> Always remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, because there's no nodes are involved and Pluto squaring the the nodes and moon and it was anyway. And then Saturday, yeah, it's a lot of lot of things next week. So. Um, yeah, I think video should go out uh, soon this weekend, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, okay, we are halfway there through our interview. Thank you. Let's just quickly, your thoughts about where do you see astrology in the future? Where do you see, where is the place of astrology in the world? In all honesty, no limits. Mm -hmm. when, I was a t when I started teaching, when I started studying astrology, I, I immediately realized the potential of it. Back in the 70s and the 80s, early 80s, and, so on. and I said at that time, if astrology was taught in school within two generations, we'd see not only an end to organized religion, but we'd also see an end to warfare all over the world because everyone would know themselves and to each other. And we naturally bore means a collective tribes based on uh, um, the synergy and the synastry between us. And that this is probably the basis of the old legends and mythology of the 12 tribes, regardless of what culture or religion you belong to. Now we've got the internet, and all of a sudden I find myself teaching astrology, which is right, and, and I've, I've achieved my life's ambition with this. And now astrology is becoming more and more the new lingua franca of the emerging mm. spiritual consciousness revolution. Nowadays you've got comedians on stage, yes. oh yeah, read, but wait this way, oh, must be murder and adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're all the millennials, like I've just met their sons, but I may know that they're inside, and they're standing there. Yeah. And, and it's entering the common parlance. It's entering the common consciousness. So I'm really pleased. And, it, and it's, you can't stop it now. You can't ban it now. It's too wide spun. It's too, it's too much out there in the world. So it's inevitable <laughs> that astrology is going to become probably the main tool of personal growth and self-development over the emerging next couple of hundred years, parallel with, alongside, and twinned with psychology. Absolutely. And I feel that it's getting us in tune with nature because we need to learn about cycles of moon, cycles of planets, and we are going back to, to nature because we forgot that. We forgot what, what is moon about, what is sun about, what is this. All. It's, we are connected. And I think it's, it's a beautiful Thing, going back to that connection with the universe. There's an emerging strong school of thought, which has always been there, but now is expanding rapidly, that you take to chase all religious theologies, not coming back, that the sun has always been the gods and the moon has always been the contents. Yeah. That's got me the oldest. Even the Andable man worship the sun and moon as god and goddess. Yeah. So, you know, and that's going back hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. Good. So hopefully we'll see next generations having uh, astrology in schools. We all hope for that. Uh, well, it's, in, it's already in already in Steiner schools and Montessori schools. They're teaching it. I've got teachers as clients. Isn't that beautiful? 
I, I have a three-year-old son and he knows already what the full moon, how it looks, how, what does the new moon look like? <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. And um, uh, astrology is a great tool really for understanding each other and to have better relationships with everybody around ourselves. The understanding, that's beautiful. Uh, I want to also mention, so your books, which I have both copies. I know those are first editions and they're signed by you. So this is going to be worth a lot <laughs> one day. The Bedroom Astrologer yeah. has now been completely rewritten and is out. Okay, perfect. I'm going to... New section. Yeah. Uh, um, so, well, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, that's the one. That was written um, in 2014, New Horizons Probe actually landed to Pluto. So what you don't know is that in this last six months, I've completely rewritten that book, and I've added another five to 10,000 words at the end based on the discoveries from the New Horizons Pro and how that works not only astronomically, mm-hmm. sociologically, and psychologically. And there's a just got the code and proofs of a new cover yesterday, and it'll be out by the end of September. Amazing. That's brilliant. And then that, and I've got two more books in the offing. I've got about 40,000, 50,000 words down already on Mercury. And I am writing, uh, I hope it'll be my life's work. Um, there's two other books in plan. One, I've got 10,000 words written down. It's not got a title yet, but it's going to be, I hope, the follow-up to Planets in Transit. Because was the love Robert Hans book. It's now 40, at least 40 years old. Yeah. And um, all of this stuff I've been teaching, there's so much information now. I've just got to get it into a book. I love it. I love it. I love these two books. But Pluto is my favorite because I have it in the first house and I love Pluto. So this actually book helped me to understand myself better because one of the first books I read. And then this one is so hilarious. Uh, I will put the link below when, on the video. It's, it's an amazing. It's so funny. 15 years ago, I thought, right, I'm in my mid 50s. I need to make some money. How, do I, how am I going to live when I'm old? I know. Uh-huh. So, t- what's the two most common things on the internet? Next, <laughs> uh, so astrology. Right. <laughs> so, I wrote the bedroom astrologer to make for my pension. That's why this is very unique, guys. So, I said, this is really, really unique kind of a book, and I love it. I, I, I need. Oh, wait, that's really serious. No, no, there is, there is a bunch of things. Yeah, yeah. No, there's always, you know, there's always a serious of everything. Astrology is, I think it's very serious, the astrology, you know. So there's a great, great amount of knowledge, but on a, on a Uranian way, kind of a written. So I like it, you know, kind of a different, uh, different, yeah, outside of the box book. I love it. Um, uh, so two, yeah, I'm very, really, really looking forward to the Mercury one. I know you, you talk, you, you, Talked about it before, and I was waiting for it. Basic plague, you're a bit of boosting myself there. Signed copies are available directly from me. Awesome, yeah. Because everybody who doesn't, you know, I will put the links below the the links to to you to Steve's website and YouTube and everything, so you can go and check out his work and where can you can teach from him, learn from him, let teach, learn from him, buy books, and get the the signed copies. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Right, that's a. That's a great offer. <laughs> awesome. Do you wish to share anything else with um, with humans, <laughs> with us humans who are just um, craving to know more and learn more about astrology and how we can implement it in our lives? It's a final thought. Yeah, there is one thing. Yes. And it's, it's simple, it's easy, but it's back to the most important thing I've ever learned about astrology. It took me 40 years to learn it. People don't find astrology. Mm. Astrology finds people. And if you get that, you realize that astrology is not an it. Astrology is a line that has valence, life force, and it chooses who it wants to work with. Mm. And um, once I realized that, that made me reassess all of my old ideas around death and birth. Mm. Consequently, I've come to the conclusion that death, as we understand it, is an imposed system of control by the dogma, theology, religions, and corporations over thousands Mm -hmm. of years to keep us down. The death doesn't actually exist. It's just a transition of consciousness 
to a different dimension where there is no time as we understand it. Mm-hmm. And when you die, you get to where you're going, and all your old friends and all your old family members is big party waiting for you. Absolutely. And it's just the next step. Absolutely. That doesn't exist. No, I'm, I'm truly, but I'm also a believer of that. It just, but you have to make the best of what you're doing now. You know, I just, just seize the day. Carpe diem. <laughs> I always have that. I've got, I've got Sasser sitting on my shoulder. <laughs> it's a skeleton with a side and a cow. And he's just looking at me right now and going, that doesn't exist. <laughs> I need to change. I need to say, I need to say, well, physical death, as we understand it, of course, it's exists. Yeah, yes. But consciousness, soul, no. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Do you have any news? I know this is off topic, but it's maybe connected. I know you, you love those um, uh, field circles in the in the field that you, you follow. Do, do you have anything new? I know it's summertime. Usually there's, there's something happening during the summer, right? Yeah, they're, they're happening again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come on, let's go. Yeah. I share them with all my student, active students. So there's only been about, in the UK, there's only been about 12 so far. Mm-hmm. Only this about 20 or 30. So, yeah, there's, there's fewer and fewer each year, but they're getting more and more complex and more and more meaningful. And this is something which has only happened in the last 30 or 40 years. Although there's records of them from the 1500s, periodically they make their presence known. And for everyone who thinks the crop circles are made by aliens or ETs or humans, you're completely wrong. The crop circle makers are indigenous to this planet, mm-hmm. but they live in a different dimension where time, pattern, resonance, and harmony are the basic rules. Mm-hmm. And they keep GSE formations in mathematical perfect, perfect forms that invoke harmony, love, passion to try and get us to manipulate our consciousness. I love that. I love it. And I love how they evolve into more complexity. It's beautiful. Yes. I just wanted to mention it because I think it's connected with, um, with this, these changes that are coming up. Yeah. Very much, so. very much so. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Steve. This was beautiful. Uh, I appreciate your time and knowledge and um, everything you did for everybody, but especially for us, for who were your students. We feel very honored and happy to have the privilege to, 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 to learn from you. That's it. Thank you. Bye.